Naim Sulemanoglu is the best weightlifter of all time. And he's so far in front of everyone else that it's kind of hard to argue against that. But if I ask you who's the second best weightlifter ever, I'm pretty sure I'd get mixed answers. Some will say Lasha, the strongest man of all time. Some will say Vardanian, arguably the most talented athlete weightlifting have ever seen. Some might even stretch it out as far as Pyrrhus Dimas, most medal weightlifter at the Olympics. Today, I want to state my case for men that most would never even consider as one of the best super heavyweights ever. Let's talk about Alexander Kurlovich. Man in history. Slight dip and jerk. There it is, Bobby. He's got, he's got it. it overhead. He's got to bring it under control. In 1983, one man reigned supreme over the king category of weightlifting. Pizarenko, having competed for the very first time internationally in 1981, quickly became an actual superstar. He had already broke all of the marks of Alexeyev, the man that reigned over the absolute records for over a decade, while weighing 40 kilos less. So, come to the Worlds and European Championships in Moscow, everyone was expecting a very comfortable victory for the Ukrainian. But this time, Pizarenko wasn't alone. A 22 years old rookie, having never competed internationally, was in for show. Alexander Kurlovich might have been young and inexperienced, but he was in shape. All the competitors were already out when he approached the bar for his 195 kilos opener. And he pulled it off pretty easily too. So Pizarenko followed with the same weight, just to hit it too. He was lighter and could win just by tying Kurlovich. So that's what he did. And as the competition went on, the two super heavyweights just kept going at it. Kurlovich lifting a weight, Pizarenko equaling it. And Alexander ended up losing by body weight. He had put up what seemed like the performance of a lifetime and had almost beaten the best weightlifter in the world. And with a very, very close shot at an all-time world record in the clean jerk, he showed his first signs of greatness and gave a proper warning to Pizarenko. If you're not on your A game, you won't win anymore. So, come the 1984 Friendship Cup, Kurlovich was ready. Pizarenko might have improved further upon his own world records at this point, but Alexander was ready for more. Actually, he was more than ready. He had already become the first man to ever snatch 210 kilos. And while his record only lasted a few minutes, if he was able to put out the same mark and a good clean jerk, he might have been unbeatable. Come the competition day, Pizarenko had a very, very bad snatch day at the Friendship Games. He opened at 200 kilos and missed all of his other attempts. Kurlovich didn't. He actually had a fantastic day, equaling his best snatch ever with 210 kilos. A 10 kilogram advantage over the greatest super heavyweight ever. So he felt pretty safe. He went on and cleaned her 252 and a half kilos. Pizarenko would need 265 kilos at this point, a 4 kilo improvement on the current all-time best clean jerk, just to win. An impossible task, he thought. But impossible is not Pizarenko. In a heroic attempt, he will clean jerk 265 on his second attempt, crushing Kolovich again. The two men will never compete against each other again, and Kolovich will never beat Pizarenko in a major competition. A few months after the Friendship Games, the super heavyweight Soviets were flying to Canada for a minor invitational competition. Kolovich and Pizarenko were then taken aside by the Border Patrol. They allegedly held over $10,000 worth of PDs and were accused to carry them in the country with the intention of selling. They still competed and had a pretty good time there, it seems. But once back on Soviet territories, the sanction was decided. The Ukrainian and the Belarusian were banned from all competitions. I think it's important to note that the sanctions there weren't decided upon by the IWF. Both of the lifters hadn't been caught taking drugs, and so they weren't banned. The ban actually came from their own federation, making the both of them feel like they were betrayed by their country. And so for Pizarenko, that was it. He did attempt to come back to competition, but failed. Kurlovich, though, a bit younger, and with a bit more to prove, was far from done. So, in 1987, he steps back on the platform at the USSR Championships, but not as a favorite. 
Since he left, a new face appeared on the super heavyweight side. Leonid Taranenko, Olympic champion, friendship game champion, and second best heavyweight of all time at this point, had moved to the heaviest category of the sport. Sure, he was just settling into the weightlifting class, but he was getting good, very good. And on his very first competition back, Krolovich will put out his highest total ever, but lose. Taranenko and Krolovich had both put out 470 kilos, but Taranenko won because of his lower body weight. Internationally though, Taranenko was still far from Krolovich's best lift. He actually was yet to beat his own records in the 110 kilo class. So going into the 1987 World Championships, Krolovich still appeared as a heavy favorite. He had the biggest total of the field. It's hard for me to explain just how incredible the 87 super heavyweight category truly was. So let me just give you a rundown of the lift. Taranenko opens at 202 and a half kilos. His heaviest attempt ever. He misses it, then makes it. On to Krastev, the best snatcher of the field. He opens at 205 kilos and misses. Krolovic follows and makes it. Back to Krastev, still 205, he makes it. Taranenko then come out for 207.5 kilos, a 5 kilo international personal best, but misses. Back to Krolovic, he goes for 210 kilos, equaling his best snatch ever, he makes it. He then moves on to a new personal best with 212.5 kilos and makes it. Three attempts had passed and Krastev had been waiting it out. His clean jerk was weaker and he knew it. So he comes out for 216 kilos, a massive 11 kilo jump to beat his own world record. And he makes it. This record will remain the heaviest weight in the record books for the next 30 years. On to the clean jerks then. Everyone opens pretty light but the bar quickly hit 255 kilos. Krastev, the snatch leader, gives it a shot, fails, then loads 257 and a half, fails again. Final total of 451, enough for the bronze. Nerlinger, way behind in the snatch, loads 255 and makes it. He'll get the bronze medal in the clean jerk, but that's it. At this point, everyone but Krolovic and Taranenko are out of the competition. So Krolovic loads on 260 kilos for his second attempt. And sure enough, he makes it. Taranenko was already way too far behind in the snatch to win, but he wanted to make a statement. And so for the first time in over three years at this point, 265 kilos is loaded on the bar. Tarnenko will take a shot at the biggest clean jerk ever made. Az ezüstérme az megvan lökésben és az összetetben is. És ez megcsinálja Tarnenko, megcsinálja a világcsúcsot is. This lift was absurd. The most Tarnenko had ever lifted internationally was still 242 and a half kilos. But after his 262 and a half kilos, a few months prior at the USSR championships, he had come to Worlds with a clear goal in mind, and he delivered. At this point, Krolovich had already won and set a new world record total, but he wanted more. He wanted it all. Tremendous pull has got the weight rack. Stands up with no problem, 586 pounds. And now he's got a chance to lift more weight than any other man in history. Slight dip or jerk, there it is, Bob. He's, he's, got, got, it. he's got it overhead. He's got to bring it under control. He's got to wait for the down signal. Looks like a good lift, throws 586 pounds. No, he looks wait a minute. This lift was overturned. This is, in my opinion, the most controversial call ever made by a jury in the history of the sport. According to the rules of weightlifting, for clean jerk to be valid, the lifter must have their arm fully extended, their feet have to be in a straight line, and they need to show control over the bar. I will let you judge on the validity of this lift by yourself. Had this been white lighted, Alexander Krolovich would now sit at the second place of the weightlifting pantheon, in front of Lasha, in front of Vardanian, in front of Solodov, and in front of everyone else you can think of. But it wasn't. So Krolovich totaled 472.5 kilos at 130.2 kilos of body weight. 
he never managed to pull out more than that. And so in the grand scheme of best weightlifting performances ever, that was it. To this day, Karlovic remains as the seventh best weightlifter of all time and the second best super heavyweight, right behind Lasha. But actually, his career was just starting. The following year, Karlovic will be the only Soviet super to compete at the Olympics. He'll snatch 212 and a half kilos and clinch 250 kilos, beating the runner-up by 32 kilos. But this was far from the best performance of the year though. For some kind of political reasons, Tarnenko wasn't chosen to go to Seoul. And so a few months after the Olympics, he competed in the Samboy Chips Cup and totaled 475 kilos, a full 12 and a half kilos over Karlovic winning Olympic performance. And the highest total in the history of the sport up until Lasha broke it a few years ago. Their rivalry will go down as one of the longest and most interesting in weightlifting history. In 1989, Karlovic returned to the platform at Walls and European Championships. He will set his very last personal best there with a 215 kilo snatch and got himself another gold. But that wasn't it. Karlovic was in great shape on this day and for the very last time, he gave a shot at the heaviest total of all time. Once again, he put it overhead stabilized it for half a second, but the drop signal never came. This was his last and second chance at earning his top two spot in the history books. But once again, he failed. He will then compete a few other times going into the 92 Olympics, never losing a single time. Come to the Barcelona Olympics, the super heavyweight field was pretty weak. Maybe the weakest it had ever been since before the 80s, when the all-time world records were yet to be set. And so, in this kind of unique context, Karlovic stepped onto the Olympic stage for the second time as a reigning champion. Tarnenko was there this time, but he was just a shadow of his former self. He was already 36 years old. Karlovic snatched 205 kilos and Klinger 245 really far from his best performance ever, but 25 kilos over Taranenko, the silver medalist. At this point, Alexander had gone over five years without being truly challenged by any lifter. And so, after the 92 Olympics, he took training easy for a little while, trying to figure out if he wanted to give the 96 Olympics a run. And sure enough, two years after his second win, Karlovic was back on stage at the 94 Worlds. And for the first time since his epic battle from 87, he will actually get pushed. A new young super heavyweight from Russia had just started to build a name for himself. And so at this competition, Andrei Chemerkin will total 452 and a half kilos, beating Krolovic winning total from the Olympics. But despite already being 33 years old at this point, Krolovic still had it. He snatched a new world record of 205 kilos a new clean and jerk world record of 252.5 kilos, and he will set a total world record of 457.5 kilos. At this point, Karlovic had not lost any international competition since the Friendship Games 10 years prior in 1984 against Pizarenko. Chemerkin was 12 years old when that happened, but this will be the last win of Karlovic. He will push to Atlanta and give a last shot at the Olympics. But sadly, at 35 years old, his body just couldn't take the pressure of training anymore. Just a bit before the competition, he will strain a muscle, letting him barely able to walk for a few days. He will still push through though, as a champion does. And on the biggest stage, 13 years after his first international competition, he will take his first snatch attempt at 195 kilos the same exact way that he started with at the 1983 Worlds. He will fail his first two attempts and make his third. He was fourth going into the snatch, but he knew. He knew he didn't have it in him to push for the medal anymore. He was too weak, too hurt to give the young guys a run for their money. And so he'll up and low with a 230 kilo clean jerk, then bump to 247 and a half kilos. He has to have a successful lift here if he wants to have any chance of getting a medal at these Olympics. Oh, 
Well, never a chance. Hurting that arm, which he did, right arm, which he did during the snatch competition, just not give him a chance to, to have the power in it to pull and maintain this type of weight. And so that was it. More than the end of Kurlovich's supreme reign over the super heavyweight category, the 96 Olympics was a passing of the torch to the new generation. Along with him, a 36-year-old Manfred Nerlinger, medalist at the 84, 88 and 92 Olympics, and a 40 years old Taranenko, the 1980 Olympic champion, competed for the very last time. At the 1996 Olympic, Chamerkin put out the heaviest total since 1988. The new king was here and the old guard could finally retire. Without them, weightlifting will do just fine. As most weightlifters do, Kurlovic will stay involved in the sport after his athlete career. He will become a part of the National Olympic Committee of Belarus and an executive of the European and International Weightlifting Federation. He will even go as far as becoming an international judge, and a very good one at that. Some weightlifters in the Olympics were actually lucky enough to have Kurlovic overview their performance. Over 13 years, Kurlovic broke 12 world records, won two Olympics, four world championships, and two European championships. In his career, he faced the 1980 heavyweight Olympic champion, as well as the 1996 super heavyweight Olympic champion. He was the cornerstone of what might be the greatest clean jerk of all time. Had he been a little bit luckier, he might be remembered to this day as the second best weightlifter to ever step on a platform. Without him, the late 80s and early 90s would have been the weakest weightlifting era of all time. And had he been pushed just a little bit more later on in his career, he might have put out the best lift in history. So the next time someone asks you, who's the best weightlifter ever? Keep him in mind.